welcome student friends for this session number 4 on powder metallurgy this session number 4 is focused on now powder metallurgy process so the outline of presentation is to understand the basic steps in powder metallurgy then blending and mixing compaction sintering and then the basic rules for the powder metallurgy part so the course this lesson objective is to understand and learn this basic steps in the powder metallurgy and these steps are after powder fabrication the blending and mixing then compaction then sintering and then the basic rules for the powder metallurgy part so this covers the all aspects pertaining to the powder metallurgy so the basic steps are concerned the metal powder as two components of powder metallurgy one is production of a metal powder that all the aspects relating to it we discussed it in lesson number three now this is a fourth lesson in that metal powder is ready now now that metal powder is mixed with some binders additives to make it suitable add some properties to make it suitable for that purpose and then that powder is taken for processing purpose so there are two methods one is hot compaction or cold compaction depends on processing requirement the particular compaction process is selected so powder is mixed while mixing the metal particles the powder produced then some additives some binders some lubricants to get that best mixture of the powder suitable for powder metallurgy process then the compaction process is carried out so compaction in cold compaction we have many uh, options die compaction cold isostatic pressing or rolling extrusion and explosive compaction cold is normally at a regular temperature but hot consolidation is at some higher temperature so hot pressing hot isostatic pressing or extrusion or pseudo isostatic pressing so after that that is taken for heating purpose that is called as a sintering process that is normally at a 80 80 percent to 90 percent of melting point range is the temperature range which is deployed for sintering and if necessary some hot forging or some secondary treatment otherwise after sintering the product is ready for use so this conventional powder metallurgy production sequence the first one is mixer so in that powder particles and then additives and then binders and some lubricants they are added it is thoroughly mixed so that gives me a proper uniformity and porosity gets reduced and then the compaction process is shown here so in the lower punch the powder is there and that die upper punch presses it and it gives me this this process is called as green compaction and then it is taken to the furnace the product that is for heating purpose controlled heating that is called as a sintering process so mixing then compacting and then sintering these are the basic steps in the powder metallurgy process now blending and mixing of a powder why it is carried out is powder of the same chemistry is, is the basic requirement so because of that mixing the intermingling of the particles takes place different sizes of the particles of powder they they are blended and uh, uniform mixing takes place porosity gets reduced and that gives me a powder a homogenized powder which is suitable for my requirement after proper mixing we come to the compaction process so as earlier mentioned hot compaction as well as cold compaction so high pressure to the powder is given to form a desired shape and we can deploy some uh, presses press machines so the powder is squeezed in uh, in a 
a machine with the opposing punches and the work part after pressing is called as a green compact and that green strength of the part is, should be adequate it is again tested for its strength also and that gives me that is sent for a sintering purpose so this is a conventional sintering process filling the die cavity here the first one is shown so that lower part is die cavity is filled with the powder and then it is uh, the upper punch is you know uh, is placed in its position for pressing purpose the initial position is just it uh, the cavity is filled upper punch is brought in contact with the powder and then the final position is it is still lowered pressure is applied and because of that the green compact uh, uh, takes place and then the part is ejected which is shown in the fourth part of this figure so first is filling that uh, lower punch where the of the die cavity with the powder then bringing that upper arm upper punch in contact then pressing it and then ejecting the part so here again the machine is shown here normally a gravity filled cavity at room temperature and then uh, the pressure is applied and friction between the particles is a major factor and because of that compaction it gives a good uniformity and good green strength to that powder shape now here isostatic pressing both in cold state as well as in hot uh, compaction it is deployed because it applies pressure uniformly from all directions and that gives me a very good green compact which is suitable for the purpose so these uh, bigger size machines are available for uniform application of pressure in all direction this is another machine shown here press for conventional pressing a 50 ton hydraulic press is used for compaction of pm parts so such big machines these machines you know gives me a very good rate of production as well as cost is for a mass production is viable the next process is a sintering process now the green compact is available that is uh, having a good strength now that should be heated at a temperature in the range of 80 to 90 percent 80 to 90 percent of the metals melting point and then it is because the sintering is for reduction of a surface energy and uh, the part shrinkage occurs due to sintering due to the pore size reduction. So, it increases the strength and hardness of a part because of a sintering. Now, what happens actually during the sintering process? It is shown in this slide in the four stages. The sintering process gives me a complete that strength and hardness which it gives me because at in the internal uh, structure of that particular green compact the first when we uh, start that heating that is preheating stage the particle bonding is initiated at a contact point and after that when uh, in uh, immediately when the heating process continues the contact points they grow into next and when the actual heating in the range of 80 to 90 percent of melting point of that metal starts pores between the particles are reduced in sizes so that is shown in third and in fourth case when that heating process is over and then the slowly the temperature goes down for cooling purpose regulated cooling the grain boundaries develop between the particles in place of a necked region that is shown in the fourth formation so point bonding neck formation then pore formation at edges and then the uh, grain boundaries develop between particle in a place of a neck region so that means now a newly formed grain particles with a very good uh, you know product which is ready for use is available now the here the sintering cycle as we discussed in the earlier slide and a continuous furnace for sintering is shown in one slide if you show their time against the temperature graph the first phase is preheating phase slowly the green compact is heated it's a continuous furnace so when it is there on the platform the compact is preheated then it comes to that furnace center furnace where it is heated in that desired range 80 to 90 percent whatever prescribed range so a, a definite time period is there and then slowly 
uh, when it is moved in the third phase, the temperature comes down and it is material is cooled and there is a continuous belt for flow through the operation. So, there is a continuous cycle, sintering cycle takes place and continuous furnace is available. So, this is the machine is shown here. So, that gives me more stronger metal bond and uh, if, if it is required additional processing in some cases, otherwise the material is ready for dispatch. Now, this is the uh, final product is available for dispatch, but some design considerations are a must when we design powder metallurgy part. The basic rules or rather considerations are shape of the part must permit ejection from the die because no further processing or net shape processing is the core objective. Powder should not be required to flow into small cavities. So, powder integrity or the property of a green compact is very crucial. Shape of the part should permit the construction of a strong tooling. Tool design should be easy. The thickness of the part should be within the range because that is having the lip process limitations must be understood before designing a part. Part should be designed with as few changes in the thickness. So, the design must take into account no frequent design changes you know should be there and the basic you know advantage of a powder metallurgy is that it permits us to produce parts which are not possible to produce with the conventional method or uh, again uneconomical uh, way, uh, aspect is there when you go for a same part in the conventional method. So, first thing is uh, in, in the parts which are possible to produce exclusively with the powder metallurgy that is the unique, unique feature of powder metallurgy and the second one is design should be consistent with the available equipment. So, equipment selection plays a crucial important product tolerancing, net shape, cost, quality etcetera these are very good things. The most important aspect basic requirement is design must consider to compensate for damage. Some allowances should be there because when we carry out uh, pressing and all the uh, dimensional change like we give allowances there on pattern. The same thing here the de design should consider and compensate for dimensional changes that will occur after pressing. So, now coming to the different processing methods are there like cold compaction is there, in cold compaction various methods are there, hot compaction is there, various methods are there. So, each method is having its own uh, uh, significance. So, here this slide uh, gives you idea about the powder processing methods are there, its characteristics and what is the outcome or uh, the viability of a particular process. So, first column gives us the characteristic aspects of that, the size of the workpiece, then second characteristic shape and complexity, third characteristic is production rate, fourth is production quantity, fifth one is dimensional precision, then density, mechanical properties and then cost. So, conventional press and center these under uh, whatever the enlisted characteristics just now mentioned that conventional press and center the cost is less, but uh, the shape complexity is good, but if you compare shape complexity for metal injection molding it is excellent. Then for uh, hot isostatic pressing it is very good. So, good, very good and excellent. So, in that you know if you see metal injection molding gives me shape complexity excellent. Production rate in conventional it is excellent and in hot isostatic pressing it is poor, but in products powder metallurgy forging it is excellent. So, the method which is for production quantity conventional press and center is suitable for great more than 5000 parts. A metal injection molding is also suitable for more than minimum 5000 parts. Hot isostatic forging it is 1 to 1000 parts you can utilize it, but powder metallurgy forging here it is uh, only viable more for more than 
10,000 parts. So, like this, it is having cost, properties, density, precision, dimensional uh, uh, tolerancing, whether it is good or excellent or poor, everything is uh, the four methods, conventional press and center, metal injection molding, hot isostatic pressing and powder metallurgy forging uh, mechanisms. All these major characteristics are enlisted here. This forms a very good guideline for selection of a particular process for producing the quality product. Now, coming after understanding the basic steps and its implications, let us go through whether we precisely understood this particular lesson. Uh, first quiz question is, which of the following is a step of a powder metallurgy? There are four options given there. The first says the production of metal powder. The second option says the consolidation and fusing of metal powder into solid metal. The third option it says the compaction and shaping of the powder. And fourth option says all of the mentioned. Answer is all of the mentioned because all those four stages are a part of a powder metallurgy. So, that is why the, the first one, the production of metal powder, the compaction and shaping, the consolidation and fusing, all these are four stages of a powder metallurgy and that is why the answer is D, that is all of the above mentioned. The second question is, what is the powder sintering process? Four options are given there. First says cold treatment used to improve a material strength and structural integrity. Second option says metal freeze to improve its strength and structural integrity. Third option it says thermal treatment used to improve a material strength and structural integrity. And fourth option it says none of the mentioned. Answer is C. It is sintering is a thermal treatment that is where heating to a range of 80 to 90 percent of melting point of that metal and that is to improve a material strength and structural integrity. So, sintering is used in powder metallurgy techniques to turn metal powder and other unusual material to a finished products. So, that is all student friends in this session. Thank you for joining.